Hey brother! And oh my god, look what came in the mail today! It is our silver YouTube button for hitting 100,000 subscribers! Ah! Honestly, I know it's just a really shiny piece of little hardware here and 100,000 is just a number, but it really does mean a lot to us that you guys have continued to tune in week after week and watch the show. We have so much fun making it, and as long as you guys keep watching it, we will keep making it. And so, to that end, let's talk about The Incredibles. <laughs> Ben, one of the things that has always bothered me about The Incredibles, and believe me, it's a really short list, is that they never really explain the word Kronos. Pixar actually has an odd habit of doing this, like leaving unanswered questions in their movies, like in Inside Out. They never really explain why all the memories keep turning sad when sadness is touching them, but this isn't happening when other emotions touch memories. Why in Brave is Mordu even attacking Merida at all? Oh. And what does Kronos mean? I mean, the word or name, I don't know, is obviously important to Syndrome because he names his whole evil operation after it, but you don't get a good explanation for where it came from. Honestly, when I saw it as a kid, I just thought it was an acronym for something because you always see it in all capital letters, it's the name of a plan, and that's just kind of like a spy superhero movie trope, like SHIELD or AIM. But we never learn an acronym or any other explanation, so I guess we should just assume it's a cool sounding word and that's the end of it. Right? What, is this your first video? That is not how we do things on this channel. That's not how you get a silver play button. Let's dive into this. First, what do we actually know about the word Kronos from the movie? Not much other than that it's the name of Syndrome's plan. Mr. Incredible finds Gazer Beam's dead body and sees that he's carved the word into the wall and then later uses the word to hack into Syndrome's computer. By the way, the word Kronos is also the password for the plan Kronos. Isn't Syndrome supposed to be a genius? That's the worst password ever. The plan itself has two phases, the first of which is to have old retired supers invited to the island and to have them face off against the Omnidroid, a robot they are told became so smart it began to wonder why it had to take orders. If they happen to defeat the Omnidroid, great! Syndrome makes some adjustments based on the new data he's gained and makes another Omnidroid that is bigger, faster, and stronger. Then he invites that hero to come back and fight the Omnidroid a second time. Every hero loses on the second fight, if they even make it that that far. And of course by lose, I mean dies. Syndrome rinses and repeats this process over and over until he thinks he has an Omnidroid that is strong enough to face off against who he perceives to be the strongest super, Mr. Incredible. You'll see how this relates to the name Kronos in a second, but this is an important part of the plan because not only is he making the Omnidroid stronger, but he's killing off supers, which is important because his eventual goal is to be perceived as the greatest super himself, which since he isn't a super, he obviously can't do if any other other supers still exist. Phase two of the plan is to release the Omnidroid into a nearby city and then, after the military fails to defeat it, come in and defeat it himself because he has the remote control and then everyone will celebrate him as the greatest super. That's the plan, but as we know, it doesn't really work out all that well for him. Which brings us back to the original question, what does Kronos mean? Well, it turns out that Kronos is also the name of a titan from Greek mythology. His story is that he overthrows his father, Uranus, who is the current leader of the titans. Then, Kronos finds out about a prophecy that says one of his own children will overthrow him. So, in order to prevent this, he eats each of his newborn children so they can't overthrow him until one of them, Zeus, is hidden from him long enough to grow up and indeed overthrow his father, releasing his eaten siblings in the process. Ugh. There are a lot of differences to be sure, but Syndrome and Kronos actually mirror each other in a lot of ways. Just like Kronos wanted to kill off the other gods so he could remain the most powerful, Syndrome has to kill off the rest of the supers so he can be perceived as the most powerful. And then, something of his own creation, the Omnidroid for Syndrome and Zeus for Kronos, eventually defeats him. It's a really perfect fit, and I'm surprised there is no allusion to it at all in the film. But, surprisingly, there was another Kronos story out there that is completely different and yet also fits perfectly. That would be the 1957 film Kronos. Here's a brief plot summary. Let me know if it sounds familiar. A spacecraft crash lands on Earth, much like the Omnidroid crash lands in Metroville via a rocket. From it emerges a massive four-legged machine. Okay, the Omnidroid has five legs, but still. Weapon after weapon is thrown at the machine, who instead of being damaged is able to absorb all of the energy from those attacks and grow larger 
and larger. Hmm, what other machine continues to face off against powerful, super-powered opponents only to come back bigger and stronger each time? The Omnidroid, that's who. Although to be fair, he's being rebuilt, not actually growing, but still. And finally, the scientists in the movie realize the only way to hurt the machine is to have it attack itself. Just like how Mr. Incredible realizes the only thing that can harm the Omnidroid is itself. Kronos. Man, I really gotta find a way to watch that movie now. For a name they don't bother explaining, there was a ton of backstory, and not one, but two completely different stories that just happen to have the same name come together to create one of the greatest villain plots of all time. Ugh. I love Pixar. Ben, my question for you and everybody else out there is, are there any other questions left hanging out there in other Pixar films you'd like us to try and explore? Let us know down in the towel section. And if you'd like to hear Ben and I just discuss more Pixar stuff in general, we were on a podcast earlier this week, The Decast. I will leave a link down in the description. We did an interview with the host, Andy, and his co-host, Dale. They were great. It was a pleasure to be on the show. I highly recommend if you like listening to stuff about uh, Mark. Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, or Disney, things we love here at Super Carlin Brothers. Go check them out. Give it a download. I think it's episode 38. I'll leave a link. Anyway, that's it for me, Ben. I will see you in another life, brother. These socks are amazing. Oh my god, so many cool sock pictures today. Seriously, if you haven't checked the hashtag for Super Carlin Sock Club, go do it. And if you're wondering to yourself, gee, I wish I could take place in Super Carlin Sock Club, but I don't have any cool socks. I have an answer for you. You can head over to nicelaundry.com slash supercarlinbrothers where you can get some really cool socks, some that I'm actually wearing right now. So you know they're Super Carlin Brother approved. You can uh, get a free pair of socks with your purchase. There will be a code at the top of the page. Just copy and paste that in. And you too can have some awesome socks to show off on Tuesdays or any other day of the week with hashtag SuperCarlinSockClub. Again, that's nicelaundry.com slash SuperCarlinSockClub. I'll leave a link down in the description. Go check Tomorrow. They've got some really awesome, great socks.